Hello everyone, this is Ram Govindasamy, MEO Class 1 Marine Engineer from Diesel Ship. Today's topic is about slow turning of an engine, I mean slow turning of engines. Um, if you are predominantly from a cargo ship background with the traditional engines, you may not have uh, your engines equipped with slow turning uh, system or devices. Or if you are from a passenger ship, large cruise uh, ships or DP vessels, your engines definitely would have been installed with slow turning and you may have witnessed what a slow turning is. Okay, before we get into the topic of slow turning, we should understand what blow through is. Let's go into the next slide. To learn what is slow turning, we must understand what is blow through of an engine. Well, traditionally, we have been carrying out blow through of an engine prior to starting. Blow through is a process done to ensure that the engine is free to turn. Right, what can block an engine? What do I mean by free to turn? The engine can be blocked by a mechanical part, I mean mechanical lock or an hydraulic lock. Um, what is mechanical locking and what is hydraulic locking? We will see it in a in, in few seconds, a few moments, but before that, let us uh, let me tell you what is actually a blow-through process is about. Okay, blow-through is done by opening all the indicator cocks and the engine is actually started. But you have to remember the, in, the, the RPM should not exceed um, a limit or more than 20 to 25 revolutions per minute where the engine will actually start firing. So, it is done with the indicator cocks open and the, the engine is actually started and then the operator is you know observing the speed and also observing the indicator cocks to see if there's any fluid or any any other liquid that is you know being spit out at the same time you have to bring the lever to stop position as the engine speed picks up all we want with this blow through is to ensure that the engine you know does at least uh, you know two or three rpms but yeah as you you know as you move the lever the engine would would have turned at least 20 to 30 uh, revolutions well so and then the lever is brought to stop and you know as i said uh, the, the 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 user the, the engineer will observe the engineer will observe the indicator cocks for any uh, traces of oil or uh, water or any other fluids well now let's go into what can block an engine from turning uh, the first one is mechanical locking. How can a mechanical lock occur? Mechanical lock can occur internally or external to an engine. Internally, yes, the engine may have ceased when it was lost, stopped. The piston may have ceased to the liner and it, it may be, I mean, it is blocked. Or during any, um, you know, maintenance, we may have placed any metal object inside the crankcase or within the piston or in the scavenge space and that you know some, some someone might have forgotten to remove it and that will block the engine from uh, moving i mean the piston from moving uh, externally anything can be blocking the, the the flywheel or you know stuffs like that so that is called mechanical locking hydraulic locking yes this is uh, one of the major causes of uh, major causes and major reason why we actually blow through an engine Hydraulic locking usually occurs due to an incompressible fluid. Any fluid is incompressible for the fact. So any incompressible stuff uh, being accumulated in the cylinder space, uh, the combustion space, as the fluid is incompressible and when the piston moves up, it cannot compress any further and then it starts to, you know, stress the mechanical components and as the as as uh, as as the force starts increasing it is it is going to damage the components so we have to ensure these kind of locks are not there in an engine not present in an engine and the engine is free to turn and that is why we do blow through and before we get in to see why what is blow through and what is slow turn and what is the relationship between this we have to you know see in depth what is hydraulic locking and how this can occur well let's see how hydraulic locking can occur and uh, let's see uh, more in depth about hydraulic locking okay like i said incompressible fluid any fluid 
definitely is incompressible so what or uh, what kind of fluid that can you know find 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 its way into the combustion space lube oil lube oil is available in an engine that's an that's, that's one of the fluid that is freely available in an engine that can leak from fuel pump or inlet exhaust valves or any from any other space where uh, whichever way it can find its way into the combustion space and the next fluid is fuel obviously it is also available at very high pressure and that can leak or you know find its way into combustion chamber through dribbling nozzles or the nozzle itself can fall off and you know cause uh, fuel accumulation in the combustion chamber and uh, the third thing is jacket cooling water uh, in, in you know in my sailing experience i have witnessed uh, many hydraulic lock which is you know predominantly has occurred due to accumulation of jacket cooling water jacket cooling water can leak from liner walls or cylinder head you know bottom surface of the cylinder head or any other space you know valve cooling from the valve cage it can find its way so uh, that's how the, the, the jacket cooling water gets uh, accumulated into combustion space and nozzle cooling water is another fluid which can you know leak from injector body and then find its way into combustion chamber air coolers tubes can leak and then fill up the scavenge space from there it can find its way into combustion chamber as well i've put miscellaneous because i've even witnessed ballast water uh, finding its way into the combustion chamber how can that happen uh, one of the ships that i've uh, worked had uh, egb washing uh, tank and uh, the tank had a vent and that vent was cross connected to a ballast tank i don't know how it was designed probably it was an error when they designed uh, however you know probably the designer might have thought the, the the overflow you know goes all the way up to funnel and then comes back uh, so in in one of the ships the ballast tank was overfilled uh, under pressure with the ballast pump and this water was overflowing through the vent probably the overflow was blocked or whatever and uh, i mean sorry yeah ballast lines ballast tanks you know not not all the ballast tanks don't have uh, overflow they have to flow overflow through the vent and the water found its way through the cross connected vent into the egb washing line through that into turbocharger uh, you know from there into a, um, exhaust manifold and then to the valve which is open exhaust valve and then into the combustion chamber uh, so there are many ways uh, incompressible incompressible fluid that may find its way into combustion chamber and that's how uh, hydraulic locking occurs why did i you know explain hydraulic locking more in depth because out, i mean mechanical locking yes can occur but you know more than mechanical locking hydraulic hydraulic locking is you know does happen obviously more often than not well um, so how do we connect slow turn into blow through right blow through is traditionally done on engines uh, where you know the engine is going to start it's a manual process so i'm going to start an engine or i'm going to start an engine put it in put and put it on load or i'm going to start the main engine so i open the indicator cocks and i do uh, blow through what if the engine is always on standby like i said um, in a passenger vessel where uh, the generators are quite huge in size like 12 to 20000 kilowatts so there the engine must be at standby all the time dynamic position vessels uh, where the uh, the generator has to be uh, on on standby always so to ensure the engine is on standby we cannot blow through you know we cannot say the you know tell the automation no wait i have to blow through so we have to ensure this has to be done uh, regularly as long as the engine is on standby uh, kind of blow through has to happen so it is not very easy instead they do a slow turning slow turning does not involve any opening of indicator cocks or something instead the engine is slowly turned with the starting air uh, torque is so much enough to just make the piston move up and down if there is any mechanical or hydraulic locking the torque is not enough to you know further move the piston hence there will be a slow turn failure and slow turn failure is alarmed and the watchkeeping engineer can investigate why the slow turning has failed so what would he do is to connect the turning gear open the turning in, in, um, indicator cocks and turn the engine to see uh, you know what is the cost it could be a hydraulic lock or a, or a mechanical lock so slow turning is kind of an alternative to blow through 
where this slow turning happens automatically by automation system without involving any manual operation. Like I said, it is like a starting pro process, whereas the torque is not as much. How do they reduce the torque? With the starting air pressure. With the, starting air, with the less starting air pressure, the piston is moved very slowly. The RPM is about 20 to 25 revolutions per minute. And if there is any lock, like I said, the slow turn will fail and then it will be alarmed. Right, let's look in, look at uh, how does the slow turning occur. The slow turning um, uh, diagram is explained uh, in the next slide. What you see on the screen is a schematic drawing of a pneumatic circuit that is going, I'm going to explain you the slow turning process with this. Um, well, what you see here on purple here, okay, this is the main shut main air shutoff valve which is used to start the engine when the start command is active the inlet side is the purple side which is connecting to the air bottle and also it is connecting to few of the components here what i've shown is only for slow start slow turn so i have not you know shown uh, engine start or something so the purple line is pressurized as soon as the air bottle is open or the air, the main uh, manual valve is open 30 bar air is present in all the purple lines. So you can see the turning gear. Let us consider the turning gear is disengaged. Hence the air passes to the slow turn solenoid and also to the normal stop and emergency stop. In it, you know, for a slow turn to happen, we should have a slow turn air in slow turn circuit. Normal stop, of course, I will explain you why. And of course, emergency stop. Emergency stop is required at all, all the time, right? Let me simulate the slow turning process. Yes, you see, you are right. The first thing that gets activated is a normal stop solenoid. Normal stop solenoid is, 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 is an energized. So that is going to let the pneumatic valve of the normal stop, that is going to connect the 30 bar air to the fuel pumps. And there's a plunger that is going to be pushed by 30 bar air and that is going to ensure the fuel rack is pushed from whichever position it was to zero. This ensures that there will be no fuel injected in whatsoever condition when the engine is slow turning. Right. Okay. And the next thing that's going to happen after a normal stop is a slow turn solenoid valve that is valve that is going to get energized and that is going to supply air to the pneumatic valve and the pneumatic valve is connecting the 30 bar air to the slow turn activating solenoid block so the slow turn activating solenoid block is going to get activated now and that is going to connect 30 bar air into slow turning valve like i said the slow turning process involves Admission of starting air, not at 30 bar, but a, a pressure enough to turn the engine or um, a torque that is required to move the piston very slowly so that we can ensure the piston is moved or if there is any blockage, the air is not enough to put stress on the running gears. Right, let me click now see the slow turning valve which is a throttle valve that's it it's a spring loaded throttle valve set to admit air at reduced pressure now the starting air manifold is pressurized with 30 bar and the air is available depending on the firing sequence same as starting actually like i said this process is same as starting but only thing is that the air is throttle the air pressure is throttled with the slow turning valve here okay now the distributor is going to trigger the unit which is on uh, as per the firing sequence now reduced air pressure is injected into this uh, cylinder and the engine is slowly moving now this is called slow turning okay as long as the engine is put on standby condition the slow turning will occur on a fixed time interval uh, it depends from 30 to 45 minutes or even you know one hour or two hour which whatever the company prefers usually i've seen it between one to two hours uh, you know which is uh, which is kind of a you know a fair time 
So with a set time interval, the engine goes on a slow turn mode where the engine is turned slowly. The torque is just enough to move the piston. If there is no blocks or locks, then the engine completes few cycles and then the slow turning is passed and then the engine goes on standby mode again. But if there is any, for any reason, slow turn fails, then it will be alarmed to the watchkeeping engineer who can investigate by, you know, closing uh, the starting air and opening the indicator cocks and connecting the turning gear and move the engine to see if it is free to move or if there is any blockage that may have happened. Okay, uh, modern engines, the recent engines uh, does not have this slow turn, instead, in, in, slow turn separately. Instead, whenever the engine is started under whatever condition it, it may be, uh, the first few cycles, the engine goes on slow turn, which means when the start command is given, first the slow turn command is command gets activated. First two or three revolutions or even, you know, uh, two or three seconds, the engine goes on slow turn mode. If the engine completes uh, determined, predetermined revolutions on a slow turn, then the automation injects air for uh, starting the starting the engine. So slow turning in recent engines are not done separately like we have seen on the on the diagram here. This is with the modern engine. So the slow turning occurs whenever the engine is started, not when the engine is on standby. Means if the engine is stopped now until the next start, there will be no slow turn. But whenever the engine is started, the engine goes through a slow turn first. If it is successful, then the engine goes to start. Uh, as normal. If not, then it is alarmed and the engine does not start at all. Well, uh, this is about slow turning, um, gentlemen. And uh, you know, I'm, 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 I think I've explained you uh, with all these uh, drawings and animations. I've made some uh, information. Um, I hope I made some sense. If you have any concerns or uh, questions, or if I missed out anything, or if I made some error, please. Uh, feel free to post it as comment. I'm always open for suggestions. I may have made some mistakes. I uh, hope it was helpful and uh, thank you all for watching this video. Please do uh, subscribe to our channel and come back for more information. Thank you. Have a nice time.